What's up, everybody? We're here to go over UFC 298, Volkanovski versus Taporia. Uh, real quick, I'd go over the, the betting results for uh, last week. I ended up coming out of the card with just a little bit of profit, man. I had to chase my money a little bit and try to win it back after uh, after Urbina went out there. And it didn't do anything. He didn't look like he wanted to be there even before you know the fight started. I kind of knew, um, for, for whatever reason, I had a bad feeling about it as soon as I saw him you know, walking out and everything because he didn't... Uh, didn't look like he wanted to be there, so I don't know. Maybe he had a bad weight cut, or or who knows what. But that was that was terrible, man. And he killed all my parlays. Luckily, I don't have too much money on parlays usually. But uh, and then Kurziev, of course, went out there with the eye poke, and so I got my money back on that. I didn't lose any money there. But if you've been watching the channel long enough, you know that um, if there's ever a no contest, a draw, or somebody gets injured or whatever, I usually somehow have money on them every time. So. <laughs> But uh, yeah, so other than that, man, I had a um, a Sil uh, Natalia Silva Imavov parlay that was plus one twenty two. Uh, that was a core unit play, uh, so I want a good chunk of my money back on that uh, from the unit uh, unit loss that I had. And then I made this after um, Urbina loss, kind of chasing my money. It was a three fight parlay. Um, would have been a lot more, but of course Kurziev, uh, you know, ruined it with his eye poke. So. But either way, man, I made a lot of my money back there, and then I, I did some live betting and stuff and, and made some money like that, but ended up coming out with, you know, at least a few hundred bucks profit on the card, kind of saved myself, but either way, uh, hopefully this uh, this weekend's card is going to be better. So yeah, anyways, uh, if uh, please like and subscribe, guys. It would help me out a lot. Um, if you're new to the channel, what I do is I give out all, all my picks for each of the fights, and at the end of the video, I give out my bets. And, um, if you're not interested in watching my videos, you just want to see my picks and my bets, you can go to my social medias, uh, high kick underscore fight picks is Instagram and TikTok, And there's a Facebook group, high kick fight picks on Facebook. Uh, pretty easy to find. I'll post the link to it in the comments. Uh, sometimes I forget, but hope I did, I did it last week. So hopefully I'll remember this week, but, um, and also that Facebook group guys, man, I, I feel free to post all y'all's bets and stuff in there, man. I love looking at everybody's stuff and, and seeing people's bets, see if there's anything that I feel like. You know, I could use even, you know, I don't, I don't like to see myself post bets in there, um, you know, constantly just me. So there are a few people that post their bets. There's not that many people in the group yet, but there will be one day. So, and, uh, what else, what else? Um, I think that's about it guys. So let's get into this card, man. We had quite a few fights fall out on this card. I guess we lost, we lost AJ Dobson. Uh, Treshawn Gore, that was a, I was pretty confident in AJ Dobson winning that fight, man. Uh, you know, was definitely going to be including him in some parlays. Um, we lost Suarez versus Lamos. Lamos is taking on Mackenzie Dern now. Uh, we lost, uh, Tuivasa and Tybora and that's when that one's been rescheduled. Um, yeah, so let's get into this card, man. First up, we got Rena Nakamura taking on Carlos Vera. And Nakamura is 28 years old, 5'7", with a 68-inch reach. He is 8-0 and and 2-0 and in the UFC, and he's a minus 800 favorite, and uh, not a lot of money to be made there. Um, this guy has an Olympic freestyle wrestling background, five wins by knockout, one win by submission. Um, you know, he's really a kind of a brawler, you know, with his striking and stuff. He kind of goes out there usually and throws everything he has into every shot, pushes a super tough pace early in the fights. Um you know, and, and his last fight was really the first time we've really ever seen him, you know, take his time and, and, and be patient. So maybe that's something that he's been working on and he's probably going to continue that, you know, throughout his UFC career, just kind of fight smarter. Um, big power in his hands, especially his left. Uh, you know, his last fight was really his only opponent he's had that was even, you know, like a decent level of competition, in my opinion. And, you know, Garcia really you know doesn't have the best takedown defense, so. Uh, it was kind of a given that that was a good matchup for Nakamura, but um, where was I at? Uh, yeah, great takedowns, very strong with his body lock, uh, very good top pressure, very good at flowing from position to position with his grappling. 
Uh, where he lacks in technical abilities on the feet, he makes up for with his power. Just, you know, super powerful. Um, you know, in his last fight, he did a, a good job at making, you know, Garcia worry so much about the takedowns that Garcia really couldn't get anything going on the feet. Um, he's very fast and explosive, does throw a good uh, variety of strikes, mixes the kicks in very well. Um, he is, he's really good, man. He's well-rounded. Um, I, I would like to see him really tighten up on his punches instead of throwing big shots every time. And I'm sure that's something that is going to get, you know, improved from fight to fight. Um, I'm curious how he's going to look if he comes across someone with legit takedown defense. Um, you know, Garcia, like I said, doesn't have very good takedown defense. So, I mean, the takedowns were definitely available in that matchup. So it was a smart game plan by Nakamura. Um, nobody's going to be taking Nakamura down anytime soon. Uh, Vera will definitely be his toughest opponent, um, you know, yet with the, with the most experience, even though, even though this is Vera's UFC debut, you know, he's still more experienced than most of the guys that Nakamura has fought. Um, and, uh, yeah, you know, he shows 86% takedown accuracy, 100% takedown defense, um, averages over four takedowns per 15 minutes so far and, uh, lands 4.23 strikes per minute on average while absorbing 1.78. Uh, those are some good numbers right there. Um, so far, you know, in his short UFC career anyway. And he's taken on Carlos Vera. He is 36 years old, 5'6", with a 69 and a half inch reach. He is 11 and 3. And uh, this is going to be his UFC debut, and he's a plus 525 underdog. Yeah, so Carlos is coming off his loss to uh, Brad Katona on the uh, Ultimate Fighter show. And he's since had a few fights fall out. He's been training, you know, working pretty hard. Um, I think taking this fight with such a, a tough opponent is just something that he kind of had to do to get his shot in the UFC since he didn't make it on the show. Um, you know, not a lot of people wanted to fight Nakamura, I'm, I'm sure. Uh, Carlos has a Taekwondo background. Um, he's going to have a one and a half inch reach advantage in this fight. And, uh, you know, great, great with his kicks, man. Throws a wide variety of kicks. Uh, he did get taken down by Katona on the Ultimate Fighter show. And I would imagine that if Katona could do it, uh, Nakamura definitely can. Um, he may be the better striker skill wise. He, he's more technical, but at, at a major power disadvantage on the feet. Um, he does have dangerous submissions. Most of his wins have been by submission. Uh, one win by knockout, five wins by submission. Uh, he may go on and have success in the UFC, uh, but I don't think he'll be able to. Uh, I don't think he'll be able to keep this fight on the feet or or stuff the takedowns. And I'm going to be taking Nakamura to win by submission, uh, round two or three. And I apologize, guys, that I'm that I'm late on getting my video out. I forgot to say that earlier. Um, usually I get these out on Wednesday, Thursday, and here it is Saturday morning. Uh, busy week, man. Just uh, couldn't get it. Couldn't get myself together enough after work, you know, to, to do these late in the day. So, uh, had to wait till today. Next up, we got Amanda Lamos taking on Mackenzie Dern. And, uh, Amanda Lamos is 36 years old, 5'4", with a 65-inch reach. She is 13, 3, and 1, and 7, and 3 in the UFC. She's a minus 137 favorite, uh, 8 wins by knockout, 3 wins by submission. Um, you know, she's a finisher, man. All but two of her wins have been by finish. Uh, she's very powerful. She has some great wins, but, uh, you know, a couple of questionable losses on her record. Um, she lost on her debut to a fighter. Nobody's really heard of since, um, I forget, I forget what her name was. And, uh, but she has, you know, she has made a lot of improvements. I don't care what anybody says, you know, she lost, I thought she lost the Angela Hill fight. Um, I know I probably say that every time I talk about Amanda Lamos and even Dana White was like, you know, Angela Hill won that fight. So, um, but either way, she has gone on and, you know, looked great since, uh, for the most part, aside from, you know, her title defense. Um, she's going to have a two-inch reach advantage in this fight. This fight really makes zero sense to me because Lamos just fought for the title and uh, Dern just got her ass kicked by Jessica Andrade. So not sure why, not sure why they put this fight together, man. Lamos, Lamos has great striking. She switches back and forth from Southpaw to or Orthodox a lot. Um, dangerous chokes, gu guillotines and darts chokes. Uh, she didn't have anything, you know, for Wei Li, but, but Dern is no Wei Li, you know, and uh, she did have a lot of trouble dealing with the explosive takedowns of, of Wei Li's. Uh, Lamos has the advantage on the feet, way better striking and, and way bigger power. Nice front kicks up the middle, uh, uses her jab very well. Uh, does, can't, does stand kind of heavy, uh, tends to just kind of walk her opponents down. Um, she's had knockdowns and, and with both her hands in the UFC, man, so the power is there from either side. Uh, you know, Lamos just goes out and, and, and if she just goes out there and lands a few uh, a, uh, a few shots and, uh, you know, Dern will begin to run from her power like she did with, 
you know, Andrade or she'll start dropping her hands and running straight into punches like she did against Andrade. Um, I think Lamos definitely has a uh, power, you know, level of, of Andrade's as well. So uh, I think Dern will eventually start shooting bad takedowns. Uh, Lamos shows 56% takedown accuracy, um, 56% takedown defense as well. Lands on average 3.54 strikes per minute while absorbing 4.66. Um, that's probably mostly from the Wei Lee fight. Um, I think probably before that, that number would have been a lot better. Um, where was that? Uh, she averages close to one takedown per 15 minutes. Um, averages almost one knockdown per 15 minutes as well, uh, with an average fight time of 9 minutes and 11 seconds. And she's taking on Mackenzie Dern. She is 30 years old, 5'4", with a 63-inch reach. She is 13-4 and 8-4 and and in the UFC, and she's a plus-117 underdog. And yeah, man, I, I made the mistake of... I made a mistake in the fact that when Dern went, went out and dominated Angela Hill for five rounds, um, I thought she had really turned a corner. Um, I thought, thought we had a new Mackenzie Dern on our hands, but um, I was wrong, man. I've never, seen, I've never seen a UFC fighter look so terrible as Dern did against Andrade. Uh, she went out there and just kind of withered under the power and, and just ran herself into every shot. Um, it wasn't even a competitive fight, really, you know, for a second. Um, I thought Duran lost the Tisha, Tisha Torres fight, uh, so that makes her only good win in the UFC. You know, Verna Januroba, um, who's gone on to be to do some, some some things. I think she's on a roll right now, if I'm not mistaken. But uh, Duran has terrible striking, some of the worst striking defense I've ever seen. Um, she's never won a fight by knockout. Does have seven wins by submission. Uh, she's known for being a two time world uh, world uh, two time jiu jitsu world champion. Uh, but at this high, high of a level, man, most fighters have good submission defense and good takedown defense. Um, she keeps her chin up in the air too far, uh, fights very reckless in her striking. Uh, the leg kicks are there all day on Dern. Um, every time Andrade landed in a shot, Dern was rocked and, and dropped. And I definitely think Lamos's power is is up to par with Andrade's. So just to prove my point about, um, you know, Mackenzie Dern's takedowns, um, you know, not not being very good. She shows 14% takedown accuracy on UFC.com with 40% takedown defense. Uh, lands 3.49 strikes per minute on average while absorbing 4.21. Uh, 40% striking accuracy. Uh, she was able to get, you know, my girl Angie Hill down, but uh, Hill hasn't hasn't had very good takedown defense in the past, you know, so that's something she's really been working on this late into her career. Um, but seems seems other... Um, Seems like the other fights with the girls at the top of the division that Mackenzie Dern has had, she hasn't really been able to get the takedowns. And uh, even if she does, I think Lamos would eventually land a big shot, or maybe Dern will stick her head in a guillotine or a darse choke. So, I bet I am going to be taking Lamos to win by second round knockout. Or maybe second round submission, whichever. Next up, we got Josh Quinlan taking on Danny Barlow. Josh Quinlan is 31 years old, six foot tall with a 72 inch reach. He is six and one, and uh, one and one in the UFC, and he's a plus 150 underdog. Yeah, Josh. Um, Josh went six and zero oh as an amateur as well. Um, he had a he had his win on the Contender Series overturn because uh, of a failed test for steroids, I believe. Um, he knocked out Jason Witt in his UFC debut. Uh, showed off his big power. But, um, you know, did give up a takedown in that fight, and he got back up pretty easily. But um, in his last fight, he had trouble with the long reach of Trey Waters, tired himself out trying to get takedowns, um, just couldn't get on the inside at all. And uh, and this is another similar matchup for him, another guy that has a big reach advantage. Um, not as tall as Trey Waters, though, but, you know, uh, I still think the uh, uh, he might have a better reach than, than Trey Waters had. I, I don't remember. Um you know, Quinlan's really been trying to work on his uh, on his wrestling, um, and 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 fighting in the clinch. And I just I don't know if Barlow is quite as good at, at as Trey Waters with his reach and counters, but he definitely has more power um, in his hands. And this fight comes down to has Josh made the improvements? Has he learned from his last fight? You know what to do in this situation. Um, he's most dangerous in a brawl. You know in the pocket. Uh, Josh does tend to throw everything. You know really hard. Uh, rather than throwing nice straight shots or, or popping the jab, really, you know, he was just kind of, you know, throwing big shots rather than trying to get on the inside with straight punches in his last fight. Um, he is very tough. He's never been finished. Um, when these, 
when these guys get a quick, you know, some quick knockouts and you haven't seen much of them at a high level, it's kind of hard to know exactly where they're at with their skill set. Um, you know, all, all Quinlan's wins have been by finish, four knockouts and two submissions. Um, if Josh can get on the inside, if he can land a shot, all it does take is one, man. I just don't know if he's going to be able to do that in this matchup. Um, he's taking on Danny Barlow. He is 28 years old, 6'2", with an 80-inch reach. He is 7-0, and and this is going to be his UFC debut. And he is a minus-175 favorite. Yeah, he's going to have um, an 8-inch reach advantage. Uh, four wins by knockout, one win by submission. Uh, tall and rangy for the weight class. Um, before the Contender Series, he hadn't really you know, fought anybody with a really good record or much experience. Um, he switches stances a lot, nasty straight left hand. Uh, very fast, great head movement, good footwork, very tricky style to get to get a read on, man. And uh, d- goes to the body really well uh, with his punches. Most of his wins have been first round finishes. Um, I went back and watched the last time Barlow went to a decision, and uh, he did get taken down by a one and zero fighter, and you know almost got submitted for a second the first round. But he did um, he did show good submission defense, and he did turn the fight around and and really dominate the rest of the fight. Um, this guy is, you know, still pretty young. He's going to be getting better and better, and I think he's going to do well in the UFC. Uh, very accurate with his shots. He's the cleaner, more technical striker, and uh, he's got the he's got the nice, um, you know, straight nice punches, man. You know, fast and to the point. Whereas Josh uses the raw power to try and get guys out of there. Uh, Josh is going to be looking for for takedowns for sure, um, or just a big shot early because I don't think he's going to want to stand with Barlow on the feet very long. So most likely Josh is going to blitz in with a big shot and look for takedowns over and over again. Um, if Josh's wrestling has improved a lot, maybe he could pull off a win here. Um, if he lands a big shot, maybe he could win. But but Barlow has taken some hard shots before in the past, and he's never been finished. So um, I've got to go with Barlow to get the win here. And uh, he has a lot more power on his shots than, than Trey Waters did. So um, I do think Barlow has a good chance to win this fight by knockout. And I'm going to take it a win by... Uh, second round knockout. Next up, we got Foul Woodburn taking on Oban Elliott. And Woodburn is 30 years old. He is 5'8". Uh, don't have his reach listed on here. Um, I don't know if I wrote it down or not. I guess I didn't write it down. I know I, I thought I made a note of it whenever I was doing running the tape on this fight, but uh, he is seven and one and zero and one in the UFC, and he's a plus two thirty five underdog. And uh, we haven't got to see this guy, you know, in a legit matchup yet. You know, he took that fight against Bo Nickel on really short notice, and he was fighting up a weight class. And you could definitely tell, man, he was way smaller than Bo Nickel. Uh, does have big power, five wins by knockout, never won or lost a fight by submission. Um, he can. He came out of an organization that I'm not really all that familiar with. I think it's called Combat Night or something like that. Um, I don't really, I don't recall any names coming out of there off the top of my head that that um, unless maybe y'all could correct me on that. That uh, you know, kind of became a big deal or you know, in the UFC or whatever. But um, um, he is awfully short for this weight class as well. You know, his early career was all knockouts, but but once he started fighting guys with a little more experience with records like you know, thirty and sixteen or seventeen and eight, he kind of started getting decision wins at that point. Um, his takedown defense held up on the regional scene, throws nasty uppercuts in close, uh, fights well in the clinch, has, a uh, has looked, looked great up until the Bo Nickel fight, honestly. And he does throw nice combinations in the pocket, has decent cardio. He's gone the distance, um, really pressures his opponents and pushes forward. Uh, he def, he's definitely not the first guy to have a, you know, a bad debut in the UFC. Uh, both these guys are coming off the regional scene. Anything could happen. And, uh, you know, Val is the shorter fighter, but he's going to have a two inch reach advantage in this fight. Uh, that could definitely play a factor in th- in this. So, and he spent most of his career fighting up at you know, fighting up at one eighty five. I think it, this might be, um, this might be his first fight at uh at one seventy. I'm not sure, uh, but he's taking on Oban Elliott. He is twenty six years old. He's six foot tall with a seventy two inch reach. He is nine and two, and this is going to be his UFC debut. He's a minus minus two seventy five favorite. Uh, this guy's coming off a win on the contender series, but you know he also came from the Cage Warriors, you know, organization, which is a more respected organization, more well known. Um, he may be taller, but Val is going to be way bigger than him. Um, I got to say that I, I don't really agree with Elliot being this big of a favorite. I um, mean, the money's just going to keep pouring in on him here. Um, he has two wins by knockout, three wins by submission. Uh, both his losses have been by knockout, which is what you know. That's how Val has finished most of his opponents. 
Um, Elliott may have the more technical striking, but Val has the power advantage. Um, he would be smart to look for takedowns in this fight. Um, I would agree that Elliott has, you know, more skills or, or maybe w more well-rounded, uh, than Val, but, uh, and probably has a better ground game. So, I mean, but, but, um, but Val's power, you know, isn't to be played with on the feet either. So, um, you know, Elliott's going to want to fight smart here. And, uh, also, you know, Val's a big, strong dude. He might not be easy to take down. Um, like I said, it's held up on the regional scene, so we'll just have to see. Um, there are a lot of things that worry me here, at least, you know, as far as, you know, laying the big price on Elliott. Um, kind of makes me want to pick Woodburn just because the price is really out of hand. Um, Elliott has fought the tougher competition. Um, I know Nickel fought Woodburn, but it didn't last very long. Um, I just, I don't get, you know, what's given everybody so much confidence in this fight. Um, you know, Elliot did almost get finished in the second round on his fight in the contender series. Um, he's been knocked out a few times before. Um, he is definitely tough as hell for sure. And I, I guess I like him to win, but the, but the price is, you know, way too high for me. Um, I'm going to pick Elliot to win. I think he's more well-rounded, but I, I won't get heavily invested in this fight. Um, I would say that if you're going to bet Woodburn, uh, take him to win by knockout. You know, I'm sure that's a better price. Um, Kind of rooting for Woodbird to win, though. So, but I'm going to go with Elliot to win. Next up, we got Andrew Lee taking on Miranda Maverick. And uh, Andrew Lee is 35 years old. She's 5'6 with a 69 and a half inch reach. She is 13 and 8 and 5 and 6 in the UFC, and she's a plus 170 underdog. Uh, you know, I know that, you know, Lee ha is on a three fight losing streak, but she's been fighting, you know, killers, all the, all the really tough girls in the division. Um, uh, you know, Arruyo, uh, Barber, that was a split decision. It was a very close fight. Um, Natalia Silva, you know, so uh, can't can't falter for those wins. I think all three of those people would probably beat Mar uh, Maverick too. But um, uh, where was that? At? Yeah, she arguably won the, the Macy Barber fight. I, I do think that this could be a more competitive fight than the line indicates. Um, Andrea has fought the tougher competition for sure by far. Um, I think Maverick would lose to, I already said that, uh, Lee, Lee is going to be way bigger and, uh, and have a four inch reach advantage in this fight. Um, Andrea's wrestling looked a lot better in the barber fight. She didn't have, she didn't have anything for Silva, but nobody has really. So, um, she's been around a while, man. You know, she's, she has some good wins and some bad losses on her record. She has a Muay Thai background, uh, pretty good jujitsu fights well in the clinch, throws good uppercuts. Um, very good with her body lock takedowns and her trips. Uh, so she, she has lost a lot of split decisions in her UFC career, and and some of those she probably should have won. Uh, there's been all this hype on Maverick for a while now, but I think I've said it before, man. Most of her wins, you know, are are over not not that great a competition. Um, so Lee does have a shot here, I think, in my opinion. You know, we saw holes in Maverick's game against uh, Jazz Davicius. So just because she beat you know Cachoeira since then, uh, who has zero takedown defense, um. Doesn't mean she's made, you know, improvements. Um, you know, Jasmine Jastavicius was also a bigger, uh, a bigger fighter, you know, longer fighter, uh, which is what Maverick was having trouble with. And uh, Lee's going to have that reach advantage here. So uh, Maverick shows 58% takedown accuracy, 54% uh, takedown defense, 47% uh, striking accuracy with 64% striking defense, which is pretty good. Uh, lands almost five strikes per minute on average while absorbing 3.69. And uh, averages 1.84 takedowns per 15 minutes. And uh, she has three wins by knockout and five wins by submission on her record. And she's taking on Miranda Maverick. She is 26 years old. She's 5'3", with a 65 and a half inch reach. She is 12 and 5 and 5 and 3 in the UFC. And she's a minus 200 favorite. Um, one win by knockout, seven wins by submission. Uh, so... As you've probably already gathered by now, I'm not all that high on Maverick. She is well-rounded. She has looked good. Uh, does her best work with her wrestling and grappling. Uh, great jujitsu, decent boxing. Uh, but like I said, man, you know we saw some of the holes in her game. You know, in the in the Jazz Davicius fight, man, she was a big favorite in that fight, and she just couldn't get anything going. Uh, she was shooting bad takedowns, uh, just making a lot of mistakes, man. And which makes me wonder, you know, does she really have all that great of wrestling, or 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 did her opponents just have bad takedown defense? You know, um, I think Lee has the power advantage and the better striking. Um, if she can keep it on the feet. Uh, would I be shocked if Maverick won? You know, no, I, I imagine <laughs> that by the time this fight happens, uh, Miranda's probably going to be over a minus 300 favorite. Um, if Maverick can get the takedown, she could pull off the win. Um, Andrea has only been submitted once in her career, and it was in 2016, so a long time ago. 
Uh, going back and watching both these girls' fights with Macy Barber, um, I thought Lee could have won that fight, like I said, and I thought you know Maverick had a close first round, but I didn't agree with it being a split decision. Um, I guess if you're going to go with Maverick, minus 200 is a good price if you catch her early. Um, she shows 48% takedown accuracy, 42% takedown defense, uh, 47% striking accuracy, and 59% striking defense. Um, she lands 3.71 strikes per minute while absorbing 2.62. And uh, she averages 2.41 takedowns per 15 minutes. Uh, so, you know, Andrea Lee has the advantages in some of the numbers, but Maverick uh, gets more takedowns. Um, I'm going to take the dog shot on, you know, Andrea Lee here. Um, if you catch Ma Maverick early, because the, the price, if, you, if you're going to go with Maverick, catch her early, man, the price is going to shoot up and up. Um, I'm not going to get heavily invested in this fight. Probably just put it on one parlay uh, just for the value. But uh, I think Lee could definitely give Maverick more problems than... Uh, that people are anticipating. Next up, we got Miang Zhang taking on Brinson Ribeiro. And uh, Zhang is 25 years old. He is 6'2 with a 75 inch reach. He is 16 and 6, and this is his UFC debut. Uh, he's a minus 155 favorite, and we haven't been seeing any light heavyweight or heavyweight guys coming out of China really uh, recently, so. You know, excited to see this guy in the UFC, and uh, this guy has a good frame, man, and body type for this division. Ten wins by knockout, six wins by submission. Uh, never won a fight by decision. Um, has a, He's currently on a nine-fight win streak. He, he's had a lot of losses at the beginning of his career. Uh, was knocked out three times and submitted twice. But, um, you know, seems to have turned it all around, man. He, he was a big underdog on the road to UFC fight, and, and he looked amazing in that fight. Uh, great kickboxing, big power, nasty straight right hand, very fast. Um, and I know he used to fight at heavyweight, but in his last fight, he looked like he could make 185 even. He's really slimmed down quite a bit. Um, all of his, Almost all of his wins are first-round finishes. Um, you know, Obviously, no numbers to go over uh, when talking about this guy. You can, you can tell he has a really strong kickboxing background uh, and a really good build for, for kickboxing. Um, uh, the questions that are not answered are how good is his ground game? Can he stop the takedowns? And uh, can, he, can he defend the chokes? You know, so... And he's taking on Britson Ribeiro. He is 27 years old, 6'3", with an 81-inch reach. He is 17, or 15 and 5, sorry. And this is going to be his UFC debut. And he is a plus-135 underdog. Uh, first thing I noticed right off the bat is everyone on Tapology is going with Ribeiro, but yet Zhang is the favorite on the betting line. Um, Ribeiro is going to have a 6-inch reach advantage in this fight. He's definitely fought the tougher competition up to this point. Uh, just beat an undefeated guy in the Contender Series. Um, he has 9 wins by knockout, 6 wins by submission. Uh, good at using his long reach, does throw straighter shots, but he does put everything on them uh, as well. And uh, he has a really nice jab, uh, good takedown defense. Uh, one thing I don't like is he backs straight up sometimes rather than circling off. Um, he's not afraid not afraid to get in a brawl, though, either, and exchange punches. Um, Zhang may have the more technical striking and uh, and better striking defense, but I actually think Ribeiro uh, could definitely get the takedowns if he wanted here. And uh, I think he has the advantages on the ground for sure. Uh, they both hit very hard, you know, not... Hard to say who's going to have the advantage there. Um, anything could happen, man. Uh, I'm going to be taking the dog shot on Ribeiro. Um, I think that uh, I think he could land a big shot and get a knockout. Um, I think his big reach advantage will come into play in this fight. But also, I just I'm picking him mo mainly because I feel like he has the option uh, to use his jujitsu. He's got some wins by submission. He's the more well-rounded fighter out of these two. So I'm going to be going with him, man. And uh, once again, not not a whole lot of money on it, but. Uh, I like him there. I like him in this spot, man. So, Next up, we got uh, Marcos Ruggiero de Lima taking on Justin Taffa. And uh, de Lima is 38 years old, coming up on 39 now. 6'1 uh, with a 75-inch reach. He is 21, 9-1, and 10-7 and and in the UFC. And he's a minus 141 favorite. And... Uh, Well, this is one of those fights where, like, I, I don't, I don't have a a giant, um, <laughs> I don't have a, a giant explanation as to why my my pick is uh is what it is, um, or why I feel so strongly about it, um, but uh, Delima is uh, where was I at? Oh, don't I don't agree with this guy being the favorite. Um, I think people are reading too much into into the Cortez Acosta win. 
Um, Acosta didn't know how to check leg kicks, man, and DeLimo took advantage of that. Very smart on his part. Other than that, his last win was over um, Andre Lasky, who should be retired by now. Um, we saw how easily Derek Lewis ran through him, you know, just ran out there out of the gate and caught him with a good shot and put him out. Um, he has 13 wins by knockout and four wins by submission. Uh, most of his wins in the UFC have been over guys that didn't stick around. Um, he's going to have a one-inch reach advantage, um, but he's going to be at a big power disadvantage on the feet. Uh, those leg kicks, you know, probably aren't going to do anything to Tafa. Um, he's the size of his legs, man. He's a big dude. Um, DeLima is probably the more well-rounded fighter. Uh, Tafa is basically a kickboxer. So, you know, DeLima will need to try and get Tafa down and look for a submission to win this fight, in my opinion. And, and uh, you know, Tafa has never been taken down in the UFC, man. He's he's a big guy. It's hard to take down. So I don't think DeLima is big enough or strong enough to, to get him down. Um, so therefore, it's going to be hard for DeLima to get anything going, you know, with that game plan. Um, he'll probably have a speed advantage being the smaller guy, but, uh, you know, maybe he plans to stay on the outside and try to pick at Tafa uh, or whatever, but... Um, he shows 48% takedown accuracy and 59% takedown defense, uh, 57% striking accuracy and 52% striking defense. Uh, lands 3.61 strikes per minute on average while absorbing 2.96. Uh, does say he averages 1.34 takedowns per 15 minutes uh, with an average fight time of 6 minutes and 12 seconds. Um, I think it's been a, quite a while since I've seen him take anybody down, though. So <laughs> it has at least been a few years. Um, and he's taking on Justin Toffa. He is 30 years old, uh, six foot tall with a 74 inch reach. And he is seven and three and four, three and one in the UFC and, uh, plus, plus 121 underdog. And, uh, all of his wins have been by knockout. He's only been finished once uh, great kickboxing, big power advantage. Um, all it takes is one shot, man. And, and my advice on this fight is to go ahead and grab Toffa at the plus money, uh, while you can, I think he might wind up being a favorite down the line here. Um, I think he has, I think he has the better striking and will land a shot eventually, man. Uh, he may be slower, but I think if he lands one big shot, he'll put Lima out. Um, after watching the tape, I, I, I just think, I just think Toff is the younger guy and he's got a little bit more to give at this point in his career. And, uh, he shows 55% striking accuracy, 49% striking defense. Um, he's never shot a takedown in the UFC and has 100% takedown defense. So, um, lands 5.13 strikes per minute while absorbing 5.93. Not so good of a number there. Um, averages 1.54 knockdowns per 15 minutes. Um, I got Toffa to win by knockout. Uh, I'll take him to win by knockout round one. Um, I think he's starting to come into his own a little bit. I, in the past, have kind of criticized uh, Justin Toffa, you know, because he had some losses on his record that, you know, uh, I think he lost to, uh, what was it, um, was that Jared Bandera, I think, is who it was. Yeah. Yeah, he lost to Jared Bandera, and I always kind of gave him a hard time about it. But, you know, he's come around, and he's looked really great, you know, since then. That, that knockout of Austin Lane last time out, you know, he proved me wrong there. I was going with Austin Lane, and he went out there and put him away quickly. So, very impressive. I think he's uh, really coming into his own. I think he's going to keep keep winning here. Next up, we got Anthony Hernandez taking on Roman Kopilov. And uh, Hernandez is 30 years old. He is six foot tall with a 75 inch reach. He is 11 and two, and five and two in the UFC. And he's a minus 175 favorite. Um, Anthony's best weapons are his pace and pressure and, and cardio. He never stops working, never stops shooting. Um, has really good jujitsu. He submitted Rodolfo Vieira. Um, he's on a four fight win streak, but you know he's he's had fight after fight fall out over the past two years. He's had lots of fights fall out, man. And, uh, he likes to be in close, likes to clinch, throws good combinations and, and, and shoots really nice takedowns, has nice trip takedowns. Um, he's okay. Taking a little damage early just to get his hands on you. You know, so once he gets in close, he's going to wrap you up and, and try to get you down. Uh, great elbows in close, great scrambles. Um, will most likely have the cardio advantage, even though I don't, I think Kopilov's cardio is pretty decent. Um, it's just that Hernandez pushes a really tough pace. So, I think that might put him a little bit ahead in that area. Uh, he's great at wrapping up the legs, great behind the legs, you know, when he's got guys down. Um, this fight will come down to, you know, how good Kopilov's takedown defense is and, and if he can keep Hernandez on the outside. Um, Hernandez has two wins by knockout, seven wins by submission, uh, but doesn't have the best striking. Uh, but what he does well is he gets guys worried about the takedowns and he wears on guys and, and that makes them, you know, tired. And, and Hernandez ends up landing shots, you know, that uh, he shouldn't, you know, relatively easily sometimes. 
So um, he shows 47% striking accuracy with 62% strike, or sorry, 47% striking defense with 62% striking accuracy, um, 57% takedown accuracy with uh, 63% takedown defense. Um, gets on average 6.79 takedowns per 15 minutes, uh, which is a really high number. Obviously, if your prize picks better, you know he's usually good for the over on the takedowns, uh, provided that he doesn't get knocked out. Um, lands 4.33 strikes per minute on average while absorbing 3.36 uh, with an average fight time of 7 minutes and 44 seconds. And he's taking on Roman Kopilov. He is 32 years old, 6 foot tall with a 75 inch reach. Uh, both these guys have the same reach. Uh, 12 and 2 and 4 and 2 in the UFC. And he's a plus 150 underdog. So this is a... This is another situation where everyone on Tapology is going with Kapalov, yet he's the underdog on the betting line. Um, all but one of his wins have been by knockout, 11 knockouts. Um, had a rough start to his UFC career, um, but he has looked really good. He's turned it around, you know, big power, good conditioning, uh, uses his jab really well. Um, he's done a real good job in his past few fights of just avoiding avoiding the big wide shots of his opponents and coming down the middle with with nice straight shots and and uh, uses a lot of feints to set up his strikes, you know, just good fundamentals on the feet, um, has a nasty uppercut. And uh, after the Soriano fight, I was like, man, I'd like to see, you know, Kapilov throw more kicks. And, and then he knocked out Ribeiro with a head kick in the next fight, man. So he's really been making a ton of improvements. Um, he's been trained out in Dagestan, so his wrestling has improved as well. His takedown defense has improved. Um, he fights mostly southpaw, good striking defense. He's never been knocked out. Uh, really good at targeting the liver with his kicks. Um, he always looks so much bigger than his opponents. I don't know if it's the hair or what, but he... It says he's only six foot tall, but he always looks like he's like six three in there. Um, he's the better striker. He's got the power advantage. The way he moves, uh, moves and manages distance is is really impressive. Good head, mo good head movement. Um, I've become really high on Kopalov, man. Really, both of these guys. I'm a big fan of both of these guys. Um, I think Kopalov being an underdog is due to his first two fights in the UFC, uh, getting submitted by Carl Robertson in his debut, and then getting out wrestled by Duraev. Uh, but that was two years ago, man, and I, I'm sure he's been working hard on, on that part of his game. Um, he shows 53% striking accuracy with 61% striking defense, 92% uh, takedown defense. That's a decent number there for, you know, people are kind of counting him out here with his takedown defense, I think. Uh, and he's got 50% takedown accuracy, lands 4.72 strikes per minute on average while absorbing 4.11. Um, averages at least one knockdown per 15 minutes um, with an average fight time of 10 minutes and 38 seconds. Uh, that's a pretty hard pick for me, guys, and I, it could go either way, man. I think I'm going to take the value on the underdog and take Kopilov to land by, uh, win a big shot and win by knockout. Um, you know, Hernandez does get kind of reckless, you know, running in on guys and rushing in, trying to get his hands on them, trying to clinch and all that. And uh, I think Kopilov could definitely land a big shot there. Wouldn't be surprised either way, man. Um, this is one of those situations where I say all the time, like, I feel like it's a close fight. I feel like it could go either way, so I go with the value. Um, and take Kopilov, so wouldn't blame anybody for taking Hernandez, though, as well. Man, I'm a big fan of Hernandez. Next up, we got Jeff Neal taking on Ian Machado Gary. Um, Jeff Neal is 33 years old, uh, 5'11 with a 75-inch reach. He is 15-5 and 7-3 and and in the UFC, and he's a plus-183 underdog. Uh, you know, when Neil, when Neil is on, man, when he's on point, he's capable of great things. You know, the way he knocked out Vicente Luque, um, Neil's boxing is amazing, really smooth. Um, I thought he won the Neil, the Neil Magny fight. I didn't agree with that uh, decision. And he actually gave, you know, Shavkat Rachmanov a, a pretty tough fight for a while, man. I, I don't hold that loss against him because Rachmanov is a future champion, no doubt. Um, Neil's going to have a one-inch reach advantage in this fight here, uh, despite Ian Gary being way taller. Um, he keeps a good pace, man. He he has had trouble uh, making weight in the past, so just kind of look out for that. Hopefully he comes in in good shape. Uh, great striking defense, very crisp boxing, very technically sound. Uh, throws great combinations, uses his jab very well. Um, I know I say that about a lot of people on here. Sorry I repeat myself so much, but it's one of the that's one of the first things that I look for when I'm running tape on guys, man. Like I, I have to break down, I pay attention to each each part of their game, and one of the most important things for me, you know, with, with fighters with good strikers is that they use their jab, you know, very well um because there are some people that don't use it man and uh, and it shows um he does his, does his best work you know when he's using his uh when he's using his footwork and, and not staying in the pocket too long um in his last fight he was landing some good shots but he was getting caught you know staying on the on the outside or, or staying in the pocket too long sorry 
Um, Neil has fought the tougher competition by miles. I think Neil needs uh, needs to work the body in this fight and then go up top. Um, honestly, I think Neil has the better hands here, man. He has nine wins by knockout, two wins by submission. Um, he's got the more impressive wins. Uh, we've seen Gary get caught and dropped by fighters that are uh, nowhere nowhere near as good as, as Jeff Neal. And uh, he has a good chance here, man. He shows 44% takedown accuracy with 88% takedown defense, uh, 51% striking accuracy with 58% striking defense, um, averages one knockdown per fight. Um, I'm not a big fan of Ian Gary, man. I, I'm sure y'all know that from watching the channel. Um, I want I, I want him to lose. You know, he hasn't lost yet or whatever. Um, I, this is a fight that I've already broke down before in the past, and my pick was Jeff Neal and... Uh, and I, I'm going to be picking Jeff Neal's underdog again. Um, wouldn't be surprised if he loses, but um, he's taking on Ian Gary. He is uh, 26 years old, 6'3", with a 74-inch reach. He is 13-0 and 0, and 6-0 uh, and 0 in the UFC. Um, I think that's right. Uh, he's a minus 230 favorite. And uh, this is a tough one, man. It, it's not often you, you can get Gary at that price, so I don't blame people for jumping on that either. Um, I would definitely probably... I, even though I want Neil to win, I'm going to pick him to win. I'm definitely going to flip flop this on some parlays and have Gary and and some of them, you know, um, some reverse parlays or whatever. Um, Gary has seven wins by knockout, one win by submission. He's looked great aside from getting, um, uh, aside from uh, aside, the brain fart. Sorry, <laughs> early in the morning, I haven't woke up yet. Uh, aside from getting dropped by um, Keon, was that is it Keon Song that dropped him? think yeah it was Keon Song that uh that dropped him and I know he came back and and got the win by knockout there um you know it, it's at this point man it's you know I know the Neil Magny win is a good win but before that you know all of his wins are over guys that either either haven't made it in the UFC or have gone gone on to get knocked out a bunch of times or you know like even Daniel Rodriguez is on a, a bad losing streak right now so um this is going to be um, aside from Neil Magny, one of his toughest tests. Um, and it's a, de a definitely a complete different fight from, from Neil Magny. Um, Gary is very tall for the weight class. He fights very long. He uses link very well. Um, he does have big power and uh, really sneaky head kicks. Um, he fights very smart. It's hard to get on the inside his range uh, without getting hit. Um, and I might be wrong, guys. You know, uh, Gary has looked unstoppable, but I do like the plus money on Neil here. Um, but I, like I said, I will have these you know, picks reversed back and forth and, and parlays, but I'll take Neil to win by decision. Um, I hope he knocks, knocks out Ian Gary. Um, but I think maybe it's possible he could, he could, you know, get on the inside, land some good shots and maybe hurt Gary a few times in this fight and, uh, just kind of win the rounds that way. I don't know if he could finish Gary, you know, Gary's never been finished, but, um, I'm going to go with Neil, man. Next up, we got Marab Devashvili taking on Henry Cejudo. And uh, Marab is 33 years old, 5'6", with a 68-inch reach. He is 16-4 and 9-2 and and in the UFC, and he's a minus-185 favorite. Um, three wins by knockout, one win by submission. Uh, not really a big finisher. He's only had one finish in the UFC. Uh, great wrestling, great cardio. Really puts a lot of pressure on his opponent. Shoots a ton of takedowns, uh, mostly single legs. Uh, he's definitely looked great, man. Uh, and he looked great against uh, Peter Yan the last time we saw him. Um, I've never thought very highly of, of Marab striking, but you can definitely tell he's made a lot of improvements in that department. Um, he's never stops coming forward. If he can't get the takedowns, it can sometimes be a boring fight, like when he fought Jose Aldo. Um, he's taken on another really good wrestler here, so who, so who knows if he'll be able to get the takedowns in this fight or not. Um, I found the whole situation of him refusing to fight Aljamain Sterling really annoying, um, but I guess I guess he's never going to have to do that now since Sterling moved up, but... Um, he's going to have a big size advantage in this fight, uh, but only a half inch of reach advantage. Um, I think this fight might have been more competitive a few years ago. Uh, this fight is probably going to play out on the feet, and, and Marab's volume and pressure will probably be the key to him you know, getting ahead in this fight. Um, he shows 41% striking accuracy with 57% striking defense, 79% uh, takedown defense with 36% strike or, or takedown accuracy, sorry. Um, an average of 6.55 takedowns per 15 minutes, but somehow has only 36%, you know, takedown accuracy. Not sure how that adds up, but, um, lands on average 4.46 strikes per minute while absorbing 2.41 per minute. That's a pretty good number there. Um, he's taking on Henry Cejudo. He is 37 years old, uh, 5'4 with a 67 and a half inch reach. He is 16 and 3 and 10 and 3 in the UFC, and he is a plus 155 underdog. 
Uh, seven wins by knockout, one win by submission. Uh, personally, I'd rather see Henry win this, but uh, I don't think it's going to happen. Um, he may be a little past his prime at this point um, after retiring for a year, few years and coming back and, and whatnot. But, you know, he, he belonged in the, uh, he's, he belonged in the flyweight division anyway, man, you know, uh, with his size and everything. That's why he had so much success in the, in the flyweight division. Um, he may have some success early in this fight, but I think Marab will eventually take over. Um, I don't, I don't have very much to say in favor of, of Henry. Um, in this spot, honestly, he may have the power advantage on the feet. It's possible, uh, you know, he could land a big shot early, but he may even have the, uh, he may even have the better striking. I just don't think he can keep up with the pace of Marab, you know, and what, you know, what the Marab's going to be pushing on him. Um, I wish this was a five round fight. Um, you know, Cejudo shows 47% striking accuracy with 61% striking defense, um, 83% takedown defense with 34% takedown accuracy. Um, average is just over two takedowns per 15 minutes, and um, he lands 3.93 strikes per minute while absorbing 3.15. Um, I'm gonna be taking Marab to win by decision, like he always does. Um, I'll be rooting for Cejudo though. Well, I'm probably gonna have money on Marab in my parlay, so I won't be rooting for Cejudo too hard. But um, I'm gonna be taking Marab to get the win here. Next up, we got Robert Whitaker taking on Paul Casa. And uh, Whitaker is 33 years old, uh, six foot tall with a 73 and a half inch reach. He is 24 and seven and 15 and five in the UFC, and he's a minus 200 favorite. Um, we all know how good Robert is, man. The only reason this is a scary fight is he's coming off a knockout loss. Um, it's very surprising this fight hasn't happened before already, you know, in these two guys' careers. Um, he will have a one and a half inch reach advantage, nine wins by knockout, five wins by submission. Um, he has the better striking, great in and out movement for the most part. Um, he doesn't get hit that often aside from his last fight. Uh, does a lot of blitzing in and, and with combinations. And this is kind of a tailor-made matchup for Whitaker, man. He's been very good throughout his career with with beating these guys with the, you know, the big power punchers and whatnot, getting in and out and avoiding the big shots. It's not the first time that uh, that Rob has been knocked out, you know, his last fight. Uh, it has happened before, so maybe it won't uh, matter to him as much as, as, say, an undefeated fighter who's never been finished. Um Honestly, I didn't feel like this is the the fight to make at this point uh, because Costa lost twice and then and then beat a guy who who uh, was pretty committed to retiring and you know um, that hadn't fought in a long time that had been knocked out in like three of his last four fights when whenever you know Costa beat uh, when Costa beat uh, Rockhold. So I don't really find that win and all that you know impressive. So and this did make sense, man. You know I think um, I think. Honestly, feel like the fight to make would have been, you know, Whitaker versus Strickland, uh, but that's just me. Um, I think I think Rob has the speed advantage in this fight. Um, he's just great at getting in and landing a few shots and angling off out of there. And even when the guys are cutting off the cage, he's very good at, at doing that. And uh, it kind of seemed like against Duplessis that that Rob shooting takedowns and trying to wrestle really took a little bit out of his gas tank. Plus, he got hit with some big shots. Um, doesn't typically fight that way, you know, shooting for takedowns. Um, I don't see him needing to do that here. I love how well he uses his straight right hand and his jab along with that front kick. Um, I honestly think Whitaker has the better you know, overall skills aside from the power advantage being with Costa. Um, he shows 39% takedown accuracy with 83% takedown defense, 42% uh, striking accuracy with 60% striking defense. Um, lands on average 4.47 strikes per minute while absorbing 3.39. And he's taking on Paulo Costa. He is 32 years old, 6'1", with a 72-inch reach. He is 14-2 and two and 6-2 and two in the UFC. Uh, plus 165 underdog. 11 wins by knockout, 1 win by submission. Uh, so I personally, I, I don't know, man, if anybody else feels the same, but I feel like since the Izzy fight that Costa hasn't looked quite the, quite the same. I mean, I don't know if it's just that maybe, his, to me, it seems like maybe his cardio isn't quite as good as it used to be. Um, I, I don't know, but... Uh, Although he did go five rounds with Vittori, you know, and he, he and Costa was like, you know, fat for that fight and out of shape. So that was surprising that he that he was able to do that. Uh, Costa's been calling people out and then pulling out of fights left and right. Uh, didn't want to take on the two undefeated Russian guys. Um, he was scheduled to fight uh, uh, Comzat and, uh, damn, I forget the other guy's name. Um Either way, but uh, you know he, he's down to fight a guy who just got knocked out, so that's smart on his part. Uh, it's a good choice for Costa to be taking this fight rather than one of those guys. Um, 
You know, Costa, Costa's biggest advantage in this fight is his power. Um, honestly, it feels like a no-brainer to pick Whitaker to win this fight, but, you know, the, like I said, Whitaker's coming off a knockout loss, so it does make it pretty scary. Um, when Costa fought Rockhold, Rockhold had been knocked out three times in his last four fights, and Costa couldn't get him out of there. Um, I thought Costa would be able to get, get rid of him pretty easily. And uh, that's what I mean by he just hadn't looked the same to me, man. So uh, I maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. Maybe it's just me, but... uh. And he's been having surgeries and stuff. I just don't know what you know, how good a shape is he going to be in coming in here after having surgeries on. I think he had surgery on his elbow. Um, Costa can be kind of wild at times, very explosive. Uh, doesn't really care about getting hit most of the time. Um, he will move forward and throw bombs. So Whitaker will have to you know be careful not to get drawn into that kind of fight. Uh, the way Whitaker's been talking before this fight, he kind of acts like he's going out here trying to get a finish, which uh, could play into Costa's you know game plan. Uh, Costa may look to get this fight to the ground if he can't catch up with Rob's footwork on the feet. So uh, the way Costa goes to war, this is kind of the, it's two complete opposites, you know, how Rob fights and how Costa fights, man. So it's it's all going to come down to who can fight their their fight here, their game plan. Um, can Rob stay on his toes and stay out of the way of those big shots, use his footwork, you know, stay on the outside? Or will Costa rush forward and draw Whitaker into a slugfest, you know? Uh, Costa shows 66% or 60% striking accuracy with 47% striking defense. Uh, he shows 75% takedown accuracy with 79% takedown defense. Uh, lands and absorbs about the same amount of strikes per minute at 6.50 and 6.39. And uh, he has the average fight time of 10 minutes and 40 seconds. Um, I wish this was a five round fight. Uh, I think that would play more so into Robert Whitaker's favor there if it was. Um, I'm going to be taking Whitaker to win this fight by decision. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if Costa landed a big shot, um, but I really, I don't know. I, ho I hope Whitaker wins, man. I'm a big Whitaker fan and uh, I'd like to see him, you know, fight for a title again one day. So Next up, we got Volkanovski taking on Taporia. This is a really tough fight, man. This is a, for me anyway, I mean, uh, this is another one where well, I'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, Volkanovski is 35 years old, five, six with a 71 inch reach or 71 and a half inch reach. Sorry. Um, 26 and three and 13 and two in the UFC. And he's a minus minus one fifteen right now. Uh, 13 wins by knockout and three wins by submission. Um, he's dominated everyone at 145 pounds, man. He really hasn't had any trouble. Um, he's very well rounded, great takedown defense. He's going to have a one and a half inch reach advantage. Um, you know, skill wise, these guys are some of the best we've ever seen. And, uh, but I will say that the levels of competition these guys have faced isn't even close. Uh, Volkanovsky would easily destroy all the people that Taporia has fought. Um, honestly, Taporia should have had to fight Max Holloway before getting a shot at Volkanovsky, I think, in my opinion. Um, that's just me, though. Um, the only scary thing about this fight for me is, you know, once again, you know, Volkanovsky's coming off a knockout loss in his last fight. Um, it's hard for me to confidently say, you know, who's better, you know, here because you just we've never seen Taporia fight, um, you know, one of the best boxers in the sport, you know, but I have seen Volkanovski beat Max Holloway, you know, three times. So um, I don't think these guys will be able to take each other down. Uh, they are both great everywhere. They both have great cardio. Um, if it wasn't for Volkanovski's last fight, you know, I think the world would be uh, going with him all day. I think um, we haven't seen Taporia fight anybody with the skills of Volkanovski, man. and. Volk shows 57% striking accuracy with 58% striking defense, 38% uh, takedown accuracy with 70% takedown defense, um, averages 1.84 takedowns per 15 minutes, uh, lands 6.19 strikes per minute on average while absorbing 3.42. And he's taken on Taporia. He is 27 years old, 5'7 with a 69-inch reach. He is 14-0 and 6-0 and in the UFC, and he is a minus 105. And uh, four wins by knockout, eight wins by submission. Um, he had a lot of nice knockouts in the UFC, but before the UFC, he was taking everybody down and submitting them. Uh, the only time we've seen Taporia have any trouble when his, uh, when he got front kicked in the face by Jai Herbert, he almost got knocked out. Um, I, for one, don't find most of his wins in the UFC really all that great as far as level of competition. Um, he beat Bryce Mitchell, but if Mitchell can't get someone down, you know he's going to lose because uh, Mitchell's striking isn't always hasn't always been the best. You know, we saw that in the in the Josh Emmett fight. And Taporia beat Joss Emmett, and although Josh Emmett hits very hard, um, he doesn't have the most technical striking or anything, you know, just a super big power, uh, which was still an impressive win, don't get me wrong, but um, 
DePoria beat the number seven ranked guy in the division and Josh Emmett and got to jump over all the other guys, you know, Arnold Allen, uh, Evliev, Ortega, Rodriguez, Holloway. Got to jump over all of them and uh, get a title shot. So I know he's looked great. He's looked amazing. I just don't see how he jumped all the way to number three, you know, from that from that win, I guess. Uh, DePoria has amazing wrestling and submissions, very fast and explosive on the feet, great takedown defense. They both hit very hard. Uh, DePoria has a really nice left uppercut. Um, very good with his le- with his lead hand. Uh, great counter striking. Uh, does his best work in close in the pocket. Throws nasty combinations uh, when he sees the opening. Um, it's a tricky spot, man. And we haven't, like I said, we haven't seen Taporia fight anybody even as close to as good as Volkanovski yet. Um, I noticed Taporia wasn't checking the leg kicks in his last fight. Um, he probably has the speed advantage early. Uh, Taporia shows 46% striking accuracy with 67% striking defense. Uh, 56% takedown accuracy with 93% takedown defense. Um, averages 2.19 takedowns per 15 minutes and averages one knockdown per 15 minutes. Um, he lands 4.44 strikes per minute on average while absorbing uh, 3.05. And uh, this is a close fight, guys, man. I've been struggling with this one going back and forth. Um, but just based on the level of competition and based on the fact that Taporia um, has never fought anybody this good, um, I'm going to be taking Volkanovski to win. Um, as far as a method of victory, I think it could be a hard-fought fight. Um, but I think Volkanovski will end up winning a decision. I don't think he's going to finish Taporia here. Um, and Taporia may have a lot of success early, but I think uh, provided that Volkanovski, you know, his chin isn't affected by the by the knockout or anything, I think he could definitely come on, you know, late in this fight and and uh, uh, take Taporia to places that he's never been, man. But uh, I also wouldn't be surprised if Taporia won, man. So I'm um, looking forward to this fight. It's a big deal. It's cool to see, uh, you know, some see a fresh face at the top of the division in Taporia. So looking forward to that, man. And uh, that's my picks, guys. Um, sorry if I'm out of it today, but I need to get this out super early and whatever. Got a lot of stuff to do today. So, um, as far as my bets for this card, guys, pull this up. Uh, I got a I got a one unit play on uh, Danny Barlow at minus one eighty. I uh, got a small quarter unit play on Justin Toffa at plus one twenty five. Um, I got a small, just a hundred bucks on uh, Riberio at plus one twenty five as well, and then I have a two fight parlay that's Nakamura and Amanda Lamos, and that's plus one hundred five, and that's a half unit play. So, uh, not a whole lot on this card. Do have a lot of plays, but not a bunch of money on this card. Um, and then uh, as far as parlays go, uh, first off, I've got a three fight parlay: Barlow, Nakamura, Lamos. That's plus one ninety nine, and then uh, to that. To that, I added um, added Devashvili and Riberio. That's plus nine twenty. That's a five fight parlay. And then to that, I added uh, Whitaker and Taffa. And that's plus three thousand two hundred sixty one. That's a seven fight parlay. I'll leave it up for a second for you guys. And then to that, I added Oban Elliott and Roman Kopolov, and that's a plus 11,206, and that's a 9 fight parlay. Um, if anything changes, I'll give you the updates, guys, and uh, let's, uh, let's go back and look, man. I know it's already Saturday, so most of y'all aren't going to care about the changes or anything to the uh, card that's coming up today. The Hermanson versus Piper for, uh, fight is tonight, and um, I know some fights have been changed around on there. Um, as far as the... Uh, uh, Robert Britzik uh, to Poteria fight. Um, Poteria's taking this on short notice, and he's coming down a weight class, I believe. So um, I'm going to be taking Britzik to win that fight and uh, taking a win by knockout uh, round one. And then what was the other one? Uh, Laji Oki's fight. Uh, his opponent got changed. He's taking on uh, Timothy Huamba. I think that's how you say his name. Um I think this could be a closer fight than people are, uh, you know, thinking, man. Both these guys have the same record. Both of them haven't lost in quite a while. Um, I am going to be going with Oki here, but, uh, and mainly because just with Timothy here, you know, I mean, I saw, we just saw Oki, you know, knock out a very high level, you know, kickboxer striker in his last fight. Um, and, you know, just looking at the level of competition, you know, and the, uh, I know, I know that, um, that he beat Vogel on the uh, contender series. I guess he didn't get the contract. Um, 
but as far as you know the level of competition you know before that and the amount of experience he has uh I think Oki's got the advantage here in in that in that department so I'm going to stick with Oki on that and I did have to fucking I did have to switch my uh my bet around cuz originally I had to play on Oki um parlayed with with whoever I had it on let's look if it's on here Who did I have a play on today? I think it was Oki and Rodriguez that I parlayed together. Gonna make sure so I don't look stupid. Yeah, it was Rodriguez and Oki. I had to redo that because um, uh, Oki's opponent got changed, so I still have that same play on the card. Um, and as far as anything else goes, guys, I think uh, I think that's all the changes to this card. Oh no, it's not. I got Hyder Emil is taking on Fernie Garcia now. I'm going to be going with Emil still there. Um, I just just because uh, you know Fernie Garcia, if he can actually keep it on the feet, you know, has a chance. He does have nice boxing and and nice power. But I do think that Emil has the option to get the takedowns. I mean, everybody in the UFC is so far has taken Fernie down, unfortunately. Um, but I will be rooting for Fernie to win just because I want to see him get a win in the UFC, man. Uh, like rooting for the underdogs, man. It'd be cool to see him get a win. I don't see him get cut. Um, seems like a nice guy. So as far as that, man, that's all the changes to that card. And um, I did have some people reaching out to me, man, and asking about, you know, do I have a Patreon or do I have a, a Discord or whatever? And going back and forth with myself on that, I think I do think eventually I will I will set up a Patreon account and maybe just have it be like a couple bucks a month. I know I'm, I'm, that wouldn't change anything I am already doing. I'll still post all my stuff for free. Um, my, you know, my normal bets and my parlays for free on, uh, you know, on my channel like I always have. Um, but as far as like for the, for the, uh, Patreon thing, maybe, maybe do some earlier, earlier picks on there and stuff, you know, some early card picks, um, some earlier bets, um, maybe some prize picks, bets and prop bets. I don't usually post those very often on my, on my channel, uh, mainly cause I don't put too much on all my prop bets. I'll put, you know, 20 bucks on this, 20 bucks on that, whatever. Um, uh, and, and maybe, you know, do some contest on there, give some stuff away, you know, for, for the people that, that, you know, show support, but uh, I did think about it like that is that, you know, the last time I made a video, I was like, man, sometimes I think about not doing this anymore or whatever. So people were like, you know, reaching out to me or whatever, like, hey, you know, we would show support if we could. So if they don't have the option. How could uh, if they don't have the option, how can they? So I figured, you know, maybe I'll make a Patreon account and get that going and and try to offer some some cool stuff on there. I, I am going to eventually I already had some shirts made with my logo on it and stuff like that that I, I gave away. Uh, to some people i'm gonna get some more made and maybe uh you know give some of those out to people on on instagram or in my facebook group or or on the patreon whenever i get it going uh people that participate and you know uh comment and post their bets stuff like that uh whatever you know just have contests do some cool stuff like that you know i had some i have some fight merch some autograph you know uh prints and stuff like that that i could you know have a contest and give to people you know so um i used to try and do that on my channel and then i realized that uh you know, it's hard to do on YouTube. <laughs> you have to do it on Instagram or social media or Patreon or something. Um, but yeah, man. So I really thank you guys so much for caring what I had to say. Uh, sorry, I'm a little bit out of it today. Um, uh, please like and subscribe, man. It really helped me out a lot. I'm over 600 subscribers now, man. And uh, y'all have a good one. Hope y'all win some money, man. And I'm out of here.